Welcome to In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson. Join Dr. Lee Magnus, Professor Emeritus of Bible, and Dr. Bill Gwaltney, Professor Emeritus of Bible, both from Milligan College, as they bring you their thoughts and knowledge of the study of the Sunday School lesson for the day. Now, here is Dr. Gwaltney. Good morning again, and welcome to In the Word. This is the last Sunday of February. It's the last Sunday of the quarter's work that we have been following on the theme of God as Creator. And um, I have with me this morning Dr. R. David Roberts again uh, in uh, Dr. Magnus' uh, absence. Thank you so much for coming and joining us, Dave. Good to be here again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, he already has helped me with uh, a little bit of a problem I was having with the title for the entire quarter's work. Uh, in our uh, lesson manuals, we have creation colon, a divine cycle. Well, I've been bothered by the word cycle because it implies an ongoing rolling over of things. And I didn't like that word, but he, he has provided us with a different word to replace cycle, I think is a better word. David, what is it? Talking about a divine progression. It's moving toward a goal, toward an end result. That's right. Not necessarily to keep rolling through right. history. Um, okay, if you will remember... Um, we had the month of December on God's uh, creativity in sending the Son, the birth of Christ. And then in the month of January, we, we went back to the Old Testament where we saw many psalms uh, praising God for the creation. Mm -hmm. And now for the month of February, we came back to the New Testament to the letter of Paul to the Galatian churches in which he's talking about what it means to be in the new community which came out of the life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension of Christ mm -hmm. and how that uh, group of people would interact with one another. And so today we've gotten to the very last lesson and I think a very, very productive uh, lesson it is. It indeed. is. He's talked so much in last week's lesson about freedom and what it means to be free in Christ. Now he gets more specific. Okay, what does that mean? How do you live that? Yeah, and what uh, guides you in the use of the freedom? Mm -hmm. well, in last Sunday's lesson, we commented that we had uh, verses, the last two verses, 16 and 17, uh, uh, that we thought were kind of out of place. Uh, <laughs> he, he moved ahead and then stopped. And then stopped before he <laughs> got to the end of a place. Yeah. So I, in reading the scripture, uh, let me read those two verses and then move on into to, uh, today's scripture. Okay. So in introducing then the outcome of what he had been writing about previously in uh, chapter uh, 5, he went on to say this, verses uh, 16 and 17. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with, with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Uh, now, this has op gone back to a previous discussion in terms of spirit and flesh, mm -hmm. how they are at war with one another in, the, in each person. Mm -hmm. And the spirit that is meant here, you'll know, uh, notice that we're, the text that we're reading um, puts a big S, a capital, S. capital right. S on the yes. word spirit, yeah. because it's clear that Paul is talking about the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. goes by all of those names. And he just simply uses the one term spirit. Right. And Paul's not, not trying to divide the world into a dualistic thing of flesh, bad, spirit, good. 
in the sense of physical and non-physical, but he's talking about being devoted to God or being devoted to this life in such a way that the world is all you see, the flesh is all that matters. There's an awful lot about the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, uh, in the life of Christ, in the uh, book of Acts, mm -hmm. and in the, uh, the letters of Paul. The mm -hmm. Spirit is very, very prominent. And uh, one may, may say that Spirit um, all the way through implies power mm -hmm. and uh, guidance mm -hmm. and uh, support. And so uh, that, that's what is, I think, uh, included here. Mm -hmm. All right, then we turn to today's lesson, and we've even modified the title of today's lesson a little bit, <laughs> thanks to Dr. Roberts. <laughs> so <laughs> what's the new title that we are going to emphasize? Well, Christ creates holy living in the spirit. Okay, the spirit. I, 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 I wrote it down this way. Christ through the Spirit creates, creates holy living. Right. Because the name of Christ does not appear very commonly in uh, this discussion, but the word Spirit is really heavily emphasized. Right. Yes. So let me continue reading then okay. um, where we stopped um, verse last 18. week. With, with verse 18. Okay. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts, and I would like to substitute, uh, I think, a more literal translation, the works of the flesh mm -hmm. are obvious. Sexual immorality, <clears throat> impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other, Without break into chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instructions in, in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in well-doing and doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Okay. Uh, that's a mouthful. It is. You had a long <laughs> passage there. <laughs> but it's interesting, as, as Paul talks about the 
the works of the flesh, that, as you said, the word works is probably better than acts, even though that's what well, NIV uh, uses. We explored that before we turned the cameras on. Uh, would you summarize what our uh, what our conclusion was? Sure. I, I, it literally, it says works. Yes. Plural. The the text actually says works, and when you change that to acts or deeds, it's possible that you can get the impression of something that just sort of happens. But with works, you've got more intentionality, more. That's purpose a good involved. word, I think. Intentionality. So, and, and Paul is saying that these are things that people have given themselves to, and that's not what God is, is pleased with. And it's well, that, isn't that the way it is, though, in the world and that we confront sure. that um, this is the way people are? Um, and, uh, but contrast what um, the Spirit produces. Mm -hmm. Uh, a different kind of person. Mm -hmm. And Paul, in this list of, of works of the flesh... How many did you count? Uh, there are 15, and three of them are sexual. He starts right off with fornication is, is really the better translation of and what, the, what's, the first. And what does fornication mean? That, those are acts of, of sexual relationship with people who are not married. Okay. So it's outside marriage. Then impurity, then debauchery or licentiousness. And those three are, are mentioned first, but then he goes into two things that are religious. So you've got social sins, if you will, or works first, and then two that are religious, idolatry and sorcery or witchcraft. Uh, I would call them perverted religious yes. uh, practices. Yes, definitely not what and God And there was a whole like. lot of that kind of thing in paganism in Paul's day. Uh, the world was full of it, and the world is full of it today. Different names, but it's still, it's still <laughs> a problem. Yes. But then he lists eight things that are social, and most of us have to Psycho admit... Psychosocial? Well, it, yes, it, and... It, and the, the, the psychology of interaction among people. Relationships. Right. right. And, and almost all of us have to admit we fall into some of these areas or have fallen into some of them. He talks about enmities and strife and jealousy and hatred, anger or fits of rage, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy. These things, they're problems. And, and one, uh, a couple of, of the old, really old texts will, uh, will add murders. Yeah, that's not in some of the best later texts. Uh, or the earlier. Uh, the, the, the earlier, yeah, the earlier comments, texts right. uh, yeah. don't have it, but yeah. some do. Then Paul adds two more things that are self-destructive, and that's drunkenness and carousing. And then adds, and, and things like this. And the like. Right, he just, etc. He, he more has more listed things. 15 things and he says, and of course there are more. Right. Now you and I, again, before we turn on the camera, discussed uh, the way in which uh, people seem not to be um, caring and concerned about the impact of what they do on other people. Mm -hmm. And there's just a sort of a callousness Mm -hmm. So we were going to add callousness right. to it's, the list. Yeah. When, you, when you follow the news stories, whether by paper or online or whatever form you use, the news is full of this kind of thing. And the inhumanity that can result is, again, it's contrary to the will of God. Making someone else suffer even to the point of killing them Without any kind of conscience, right, uh, in, involved, uh, you right. know, in, in uh, our sympathy right. uh, for for someone else's suffering. It, it's that lack of humanity that, that's part of what it means to be created in the image of God. And when we deny that, that inhumanity that results shows in these works of the flesh. Yes, not even uh, most animals in the world are not that mean yeah. and unfeeling. Yeah. But the contrast of, to all of this, Paul's saying, is, is not something that we consciously do one step at a time to point where we climb a ladder and work our way to heaven. 
it's the power of the Spirit at work in our lives right. that bears fruit. And we're back to <clears throat> the issue, if we're not under law right. and observing the law of Moses or some other law, mm -hmm. but rather we are free in Christ, free of law and of mediocrity, mm -hmm. then what is it that guides us in terms of the choices we make so that we don't become like this paragraph we just finished? because we're told that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right. Now, right. what is the kingdom of God? Uh, while we're on that, we mentioned that subject. Well, it's the, it's the domain of, of God's presence and God's rule. And when our lives are yes. in line with God, when we're following the Spirit, there's a fruit that results in our life that indicates the presence of the Spirit. Yeah, I always put it this way. It's anywhere and in, in, in whatever time uh, God's will is done mm -hmm. among people. Mm -hmm. That's the kingdom of God. It's not a kingdom like the British Empire. Right. It, it's uh, when, where God's uh, rule and will and... Uh, desire mm -hmm. is, becomes ours. It's not geographically limited. It's not right. racially limited. Right. It's the power of God at work in human lives. Exactly. Yeah. So now that being the case, we are under the spirit and the spirit is what motivates us and mm -hmm. guides us. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it makes us want to be this kind of a person. Mm -hmm. And it helps us to become that kind of a person. Right. So that it, it, it's interesting to me that Paul chooses an agricultural mm -hmm. metaphor. Bearing fruit. Bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. And Jesus also used the same metaphor you know in the tree. Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. you, you know the value of a tree by the, 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 how it, good a fruit it what produces. It produces. Yeah. You know, this morning as I was uh, driving here to uh, First Christian Church in Johnson City, I went by a tree. And I remember that tree in the fall. Every fall, that tree is just covered with the most beautiful red-orange or orange-red leaves. And this morning as I drove by it, it was stark, not a leaf Bear. anywhere, <laughs> no color. And it did not stand out from any of the other barren trees around it. Right. And I was thinking about it. I said, you look at that tree and you don't really understand how beautiful that thing becomes. Mm -hmm. It's no different than the other trees around it. Mm -hmm as far as it looks like now, but give it a summer to grow and then a fall mm -hmm. for it to put on its color. Right. And it sure does stand out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was and thinking how many, how many people are there that have that uh, quality inside of them yeah. if they give it a chance to uh, show. When you look at what Paul's describing here, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, these, these things in any person's life are indicative something's going on in that person that's different and it's the power of the Spirit. Now let's that. talk about Benjamin Franklin. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you wrote a paper on Franklin based ba back on... Back in college days in American history, we were to write a biographical paper and I picked Benjamin Franklin, read his autobiography, and he had this course of life where he was determined to develop good traits and set aside particular goals every particular day that he was going to work on another virtue, another good standard of life. Which but wasn't it, a bad idea. No, there's nothing bad about it. But when people think that they can do this to please God, to earn their way to heaven, to be good enough to enter in because they're so good, it's a misunderstanding. It's the well, he worked on them, and I don't know uh, to what extent they changed his life, but that is not what Paul's talking right. about. 
This not, is a, it's not the Benjamin Franklin method. Right. It's the fruit of the Spirit. In yeah. other words, it isn't something that you do. It's something that the Spirit does to through you. you. It does through you. Right. And, yes. And, and he moves from that on into chapter 6 where he begins to talk about more specific applications of what this means. Yes. And, and well, you know, in all of Paul's letters, uh, after the opening uh, introductions, um, he then gets around to the, the doctrinal subject that he needs to explore. Mm -hmm. And then as he finishes that, then he turns to application. Right. Uh, and uh, our friend Marshall Leggett used to use a word, uh, hortatory. Yeah. <laughs> The ex exhortation. Exhortation. <laughs> right. That's right. Now, in the light of, of the doctrine that we have explored, uh, here is the result of what you ought to do about it right. and it, it, what it will produce in your life. And Paul specifically emphasizes that we're not talking about life in, in the, guided by the Spirit in Christ as being so individualized that we withdraw to ourselves and live in our own little cocoon. You're right. We recognize the needs of those around us and serve them. Well, we live in community. Right. And I, th I think that is the idea that lies behind uh, this whole month's uh, mm -hmm. work in Galatians. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're not talking about the, we are talking about the individual and individual salvation, but at the same time, it's in connection with the entire community. Because look, look at uh, chapter 6, verse 1. If someone is caught... <laughs> yeah, detected. <laughs> detected in a, uh, in, in, a, in a transgression or a sin. Those who of you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Mm -hmm. This implies community. Right. The community of the followers of Jesus Christ all of whom are trying to allow the Spirit of Christ mm -hmm. to work in them. And a person who has received the Spirit, who's walking by the Spirit, is not looking at someone who's been caught or detected in a transgression as a holier-than-thou perspective. Nor but, as an enemy. Right, but as one recognizing here's a brother or sister who needs help. And the word that's used here, this restoring, is the same word used in, about mending nets when the disciples were called by Jesus. The fishermen were yeah. mending their nets. They were restoring something. Mm -hmm. And with fellow Christians, we need to restore them. Now, what kind of attitude should you have? In the spirit of gentleness. And look, look at the next statement. Watch yourselves. Mm -hmm. Take care that you because don't... Because you could be in that person's position right. any minute. <laughs> right. And, and that, that's true. In other mm -hmm. words, don't think of you yourself as being so superior right. that you, you are in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that, that is an attitude that is displayed in the works of the flesh. Right. Then he, he talks about bearing one another's burdens, and then verse 5, he says, all must carry their own loads. To some people, that seems like a contradiction. It sounds like that, doesn't it? But, but it you isn't. know, the Sermon on the Mount is just, is full of similar expressions from Jesus mm -hmm. that explore how people should conduct themselves. Judge not, but judge. Right, you have to make decisions. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so Paul is saying, Everybody has to take responsibility for themselves. Right. But in the process, we can help one another. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you help me with something, Dave, and it doesn't go well for me, and I'll say, it's Dave's fault. Yeah. And no, 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 no. That's, no. that's not... That's not the point. The point right. is we take responsibility, but we also receive and give help to one another. Right. And, uh, and I think it's very interesting in verse 4, chapter 6, take pride. Mm -hmm. Now, is there such a thing as good pride and bad pride? Definitely. 
Explain that, uh, your view on there's it. A, there's a sense of doing the best you can and, and being pleased that you've been able to do that by the grace of God. But then and by the guidance of the Spirit. The guidance of the Spirit. But yeah. then there's also the perspective that because I am so much better or I've done better than other people, I'm superior. And we forget that we do what we do by the grace of God and by the guidance of the Spirit. In other words, uh, we're, we're comparing ourselves to the wrong individual. Right. Compare yourself to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then you might say, well, my pride, I, I think I'm, I did well. I did the best I could. Um, but you're not comparing yourself to brothers and sisters right. in the community. You're comparing yourself to Christ and you know, well, it, I could have done better yeah. if I had been more like Christ. And we have, to, we have to recognize that we all have been given gifts and abilities that are purely gift, that we didn't create them ourselves. And so if we're able exactly. to do things and serve well, it's because of the grace of God in giving us those gifts and, and enabling us in the first place. Right. And we should take no uh, undue pride in ourselves. Right. Uh, that would be the wrong kind of pride. Right. The right kind of pride would, would be, well, I'm, uh, I've been led to do something and I'm glad I could do it. Right. Yeah. And there's a difference. Yeah. Paul and, goes on here also to talk about those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher that it seems funny to, to throw that in about sharing with teachers here. But it, it, it belongs it because does. in a way of speaking within the community, the Christian community, we are all students. That's mm -hmm. what disciple means. Mm -hmm. We're all disciples. We're mm -hmm. all students. But at the same time, we're all teachers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And bearing one another's burdens, sometimes the heaviest burden is borne by those who are the leaders, who are the teachers, and there's almost an insensitivity sometimes in realizing the burdens they carry. And part of our sharing right. is to share with them and to bear their burdens. Right, to help, to help mm -hmm. one another, in, mm -hmm. no matter what our task. Whoever so, now here we have this wonderful concluding statement. Uh, you, you, uh, you reap what you sow. Right. Again, That's just a, again an agricultural more the agricultural thing. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. sow wheat and get rye. Yeah, uh, and and so it is. So don't but, grow weary. Uh, right. Uh, now the last verse I think is the hortatory right <laughs> <laughs> outcome uh, of this, as we have opportunity, as far as we have opportunity, do good to all people. As, as the followers of Jesus, right. but especially those of the family members of the faith. Right. And here we have the community being likened to a family. Mm -hmm. And Paul saying that we have extra responsibility for those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, but that doesn't e erase our responsibility for the rest of the world. Yes. But, but as someone has said, don't let everyone's problems blind you to someone's problems you can help. Right. And on that theme, we have to conclude our discussion of the outcome of the coming of Jesus in his church and how we live together in a, in a positive way and a productive way in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And on that theme, we have to leave, but we'll be back next week and we'll start a completely new discussion and we hope you'll join us and, and may God be with you this week. This has been In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson with Dr. Lee Magnus, Professor Emeritus of Bible from Milligan College, and Dr. Bill Gwaltney, Professor Emeritus of Bible of Milligan College. Join us again next week for another lesson from the International Bible School lesson text. This has been a production of the First Christian Church Television Ministries.